Real Housewives of Potomac. Um, okay, so uh, beginning where we left off last week, we have um, Mia and Candace. They're still getting into it. They're in the kitchen. The men are outside or playing pool or whatever they're doing. And, um, uh, you know, at this point, the whole salad tossing situation thing had happened. Uh, you know, Mia was visibly upset by Candace saying, um, your mom's low budget, even though Mia has called Candace low budget multiple times. And Candace just responded, your mom. It's, you know, we've already talked about how. Yes, it's childish and it's, it's um, immature and all that. But, I mean, it's it's not something that a lot of us is, won't go for. I mean, it's just clear, uh, you know, it's like, it's just like air. Somebody's coming at you. Oh, I can't stand your shoes. I don't like your mama's shoes. But did I say it? No. You see how quick, quick they just rolled off the tongue? Is it right? No. But uh, that's what I said. You know, not knowing that, oh, your mom could only afford that pair of ugly shoes that she got on. I didn't know that part of it. Maybe I would have chose something different had I known. But, I mean, hey, you know. <laughs> but anyway, so they're going back and forth, you know. Uh, <sighs> Dr. Wendy had went outside to go get Chris to try to bring him in to... The whole situation, I guess, trying to get him to calm Candace down and everything. The other men was just looking. It was just like, oh, crap. It was just like, you know, what's going on? Um, you know, I see him throwing stuff. Mia had came back in there. She picked up um, this little thing. Uh, probably a glass or porcelain salt shaker or, or something. She picked it up. She was just like, yeah, let me tell you something about my mom. Let me tell you something about my mom. I don't care. I don't care. That's Candace. Karen's trying to get Candace to calm down all up in her face. And do you know her about her mom? Candace is just like, I don't care. I don't care. Later on, Candace revealed that she actually did not know about her mom, which is why in my video, um, I had to catch myself um, last week when I did my video because um, I was like, you know, uh, you know, it's, when I was going about the video as if Candace knew about Mia's mom's situation. Um, but then I had to catch myself. I was like, no, they didn't get to say what Mia's mom's situation was. Um, but during the, the time of a heated argument, I'm sure one wouldn't care anyway. So, I mean, you know, that's why she was just saying she don't care. She don't care. At the time, no, she still did not know. Um, so, you know, Candace starts to cry. Chris takes Candace outside. Mia and Gordon, you know, Gordon's still drunk. Gordon has been drunk, um, the entire time. And, you know, he needs to go take his old ass to bed. And, um, you know, they're talking. Mia's crying. She was just like, you know, if my mom relapses because of her, I'm going to get her and whoop to whoop. Um... You know, I, anything is possible, right? Mia, I hope to God that is not the case. And I hope that never happens. Um, that your mom relapses for any reason at all. Um, but I think your mom's fine. I, I'm, you know. It's just judging by, you know, hearing about her experience and things that I know for myself. Um, just about people. And, and stuff in general. I think your mom is strong enough. I think your mom is fine. I think she's... She and you and many of us just in general have been through more than than this girl saying a low budget comment. Like, come on. And, and Mia, like Giselle and Robin, also lacks self-awareness because Mia, you started it. If you wouldn't have said nothing about no low budget, Candace wouldn't have brought it up. The low budget words was in Candace's mind because you brought it up and you kept saying it. This is her her video production, her doing music and stuff. Candace has put her all into this. She's put all of her money. Well, not, you know what I'm trying to say. She's put a, a large deal of her money, time, whatever, into her music career. And you're dissing that is, is almost like you dissing a baby or something to her. 
and 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 to many people you know people are, are are serious about their craft their art form how they make money how they want to make money if you to just straight up diss that it's just like hey during that conversation um she uh was like i think a scholar we love a scholar i think a scholar was like i think that you call it her production low budget that hurt her feelings and Mia was just like, you know, she just kind of brushed it off. She was just like, well, I mean, it is what it is. She should have said that. Whoop to whoop. Um, now, I will say this. During the whole conversation when they were sitting on the bed last week, Candace was being spicy with Mia. She was throwing digs and taking insults, you know. Um, and I wish in that, and she was wrong for that. And I wish in that moment, Candace would have just you know, let her guard down a little bit and, and told Mia that, hey, you calling my production low budget kind of hurt my feelings. No, it did hurt my feelings. And I thought that that was disrespectful. But then, of course, Mia was just going to say, oh, well, it's just my professional uh, opinion, you know, because I own a business and whoop to whoop when I don't think she does. I don't think she does. I think there's all stuff Gordon has given her to make her feel important to give her something to do hell <sighs> but okay whatever whatever not the uh, I'm, I'm gonna let the whole business thing go child but um so a scholar also told mia in that moment she also said um she said that mia you oftentimes talk about money do you talk about money a lot because you know that's not what you come from, you know, because you had such a difficult life growing up. Mia did not let her guard down for a scholar. I don't think she likes a scholar much, or maybe she thinks she's better than a scholar, or maybe because a scholar is not a full-time housewife. Maybe she looks down at a scholar somehow or something. I don't know. It's just vibes that I get um, with Mia when it comes to a scholar. But she was just like, no, um, I'm a business owner. I'm a businesswoman. I worked hard for what I've gotten. And um, that's what it is. It has nothing to do with um, that. And, and even though, you know, she, for whatever reason, and probably in that moment, she did not want to retreat back to childhood and everything she went through. Because, you know, I'm sure she's been through a lot. She's talked about a lot of stuff that she's been through. And, you know, sometimes you just mentally don't want to mentally and emotionally you don't want to revisit your trauma um in life so maybe but you know like i said because it was a scholar i don't think she would have let her guard down anyway um let's see after that uh, mia decided to stay chris talking to candace calming her down and all that kind of stuff candace looked really pretty sitting on her lap sitting on his lap with the wind blowing in her hair and stuff. Very beautiful, beautiful woman, um, Candace is. Um, so anyway, uh, Mia and Gordon, they're in the hallway talking to Ashley and her Corona and Karen and her new shiny blonde wig. And um, Gordon starts licking his tongue out at Karen saying, you know, why you look so good, girl, and all that kind of stuff. It's like, oh Lord. Uh, I don't know if that's how he got Mia. But hey, you know, Mia was looking for a way out, so she took it. Bless her heart. Um, we also found out that uh, Mia said that she's never been on a corner, but he did meet her in, in the club. In the strip club, um, said that he dropped however many bands on her and just for a conversation to talk to her and stuff. And um, she says that it was just a conversation. He dropped like... 10,000 or whatever the amount was. I don't remember on her for a conversation. Leah, me has been lying this whole time about <laughs> we gonna let it go. But uh, Mia, you full of shit. But we gonna let it go. Um, So I don't understand how you're open about some stuff in your life, but then closed off about other things. It's just like, if you're going to keep it a buck, keep it a buck about everything. Understanding your personal life, you want to keep some things personal, duh. But, I mean, as far as your past and you revealed everything, you told all your mother's business, you, you said all this other stuff and been completely open about it. Why can't you be open about the fact that you was a stripper? I mean, what's the big deal? 
I, I don't get that. I don't get we so we so steak and lobster. So what? And you clap that ass on that pole in front of the steak and lobster. So I mean, who cares? What's the big deal? Whatever. Um, you know, uh, anything else happened in that moment? I don't think so. So long and behold, who ended up coming was Robin and Giselle. I don't know if they were told by the producers to come. I don't know if they was contractually obligated to come. Um, but them half was there. They came. Um, and you know, Giselle's foot is messed up. I forgot what happened. Um, so the first person they see as soon as they walk into the house is Chris Bassett. He takes Giselle's bags upstairs, lays them down. She was just like, well, who's staying here? It's this little room, like a little room in the attic. Um, you know, cute little room or whatever, two beds, you know, kind of childish, smaller, probably than the other rooms, but it's clean and it's free. Okay. So, um, as soon as Giselle gets in here, well, who's staying here? Chris was like, this is the last room and I'm about to go because you're about to get into some mess. Giselle, she went on and on about how there's no bathroom. There's no bathroom. Um, Candace sees Robin in the hall, dies on top of her. Um, side note, Candace, I hope you realize who your friends are. And I think that your friends on this show is is a scholar and wendy more so a scholar than wendy but definitely um those two but the ones that you're sitting here catering to like one of my subscribers last week pointed out that candace kind of plays into that whole colorism too favoring and um always looking out for robin and giselle and putting them first before everybody and all that kind of stuff when they would never do you the same way They'll put Karen before you, and they don't even like Karen. Ain't that so? So, I, I hope that you, um, shout out to my lovely subscriber who said that. Um, I should have wrote down, I should have wrote down your name, baby, but you know who you are. Um, I completely agree with that, and, you know, I, I just hope you know, Candace, especially watching the Real Housewives of Potomac after show, I hope you know, and I hope you realize how a lot of these women truly feel about you. They stick together. These girls stick together. So y'all girls, the Scholars, the Candace, the Wendy's, y'all need to stick together. Straight up. And at one point, I thought that Mia was cool. I thought that Mia was neutral. I thought that Mia was fair. It was for everybody. But Mia's right on over there with the girls. So, you know. Mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, Candace goes in there talking to them and even they're saying to Candace how you was wrong and um, she's explaining everything to them, you know, about the whole your mama comment and all that. Y'all heifers wasn't even there. They heard all this shit from messy ass Ashley. She always does this. She starts all the mess, puts herself into situations and retreats and sit back and laughs. She does that every single time and she continuously gets away with it. When Candace or Wendy would never get away with it if they was doing it. But we're going to continue. So, um, sitting on the bed and talking and then um, Dr. Wendy ends up coming in. She was like, oh, hey, y'all. I didn't know y'all was here, etc. Giselle's mood and, and Robin's mood instantly changed as soon as Wendy walked in. Ashley drunk ass came in with some shots. And um, this ugly little dress that she had on, looking cheap. She was like, you know, hey, y'all, whatever, good vibes only, good vibes only, et cetera, et cetera. Giselle, so where's the bathroom? Where are we supposed to use the bathroom at? Wendy was like, um, I don't know, figure it out. She was just like, excuse me? So it's no bathroom up here. Wendy was like, no. I mean, since you guys decided to come late, this is what you get, pretty much. And she walked out, which is the truth. And it's so funny. And even on next week, um, Giselle's being extra nasty to Wendy, saying Wendy hasn't said nothing to me and she's not being a good host. And this is the hostess problem for not having a bathroom to accommodate everybody. Why didn't y'all just show up on time at the same time with everybody else? Now we're supposed to accommodate you because you chose to come on a late trip that you said that, that you were strong about the fact that you wasn't coming to? And it's so funny that now you're looking for a damn bathroom to use when you invited um, Wendy to your house and told her initially she wasn't invited to use your bathroom. But now you need a bathroom to use 
pissing shit outside, ho. That's what I would have told her. But Wendy's trying her best. She's trying her best. She's in her Dr. Wendy, Professor Wendy mode. She's trying her best to be professional. And, um, uh, 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 fair and, and just, just trying her best to stay out the mess. I don't know if I could do it personally. Um, because I just, I don't know. I don't know. I probably just wouldn't have invited them anyway. But hey, she probably had to. Whatever. So what are we doing now, Shao? Um, uh, we get to the, can we just get to the final scene? I don't think anything else happened, y'all. The final scene um, was there at this restaurant. And um, we see this group of white men at one table. They keep looking at the table. They end up giving them shots at one point um, when their wives was at the other table. This group of white women. And um, they end up giving uh, uh, Candace them table all shots. And they skipped the wives and everything. It was funny. Um, but, you know, it was nice that they did that for them. But, um, or maybe they was just, you know, wanted to see some black people show out who knows who knows but uh anyway so we get to um the whole restaurant thing everybody's actually getting along everybody's talking it's cute it's really really cute um and all of a sudden good old ashley as she always does um she brought up how uh she asked chris actually she asked chris about um how did he feel about the whole altercation between Mia and Candace earlier? Chris took the bait. <sighs> now, Chris, one thing that bothers me about you is I don't like how e even earlier in the episode he um was very he saw Ashley was very nice to her. It was like, oh, motherhood looks great on you, and um, I know that. You and Candace have issues, but um, I do want to let you know how um, you know proud I am of you becoming a mother and whoop to whoop. I understand all that, and, and Ashley, thank you, Chris. You know, Candace, your wife is your wife, and that's who she is. And you know, um, Candace, she's not able to act like an adult, but I'm glad that Chris is able to, and I appreciate it. It's, it's why are you kissing ass, Chris? Why are you kissing ass? It kind of makes me think that uh, Chris Chris wants Ash wants Candace to remain on the show financially because him being the husband, of course, that benefits him as well. I'm starting to look at you a little funny, Chris Bassett. Um, I don't like how you're always trying to calm Candace down when Candace may be the loudest person in the room. Candace may be the most expressive person in the room but she's not wrong a lot of times that sister is not wrong and you're always in the thing of oh calm down be quiet hush hush when other people get to say and do whatever they want to do you know as i understand you want to protect your wife and not wanting your wife to get in trouble and all that i understand that but the fact that nothing is said ever to the other parties when it comes to Candace. I don't like that. It's almost like she has nobody on her team. And I don't like that. And, and you're the main person supposed to be on her team. I'm not saying you're supposed to fight with her. And I'm not saying that you're not supposed to try to get a handle of, of, of your wife in the sense of her doing something she may regret. But there's just a way to do it. And it just comes off like you're on the other people's side more so than hers. It's like she can't even get one word in. Yes, she's, yes, whatever she says, yes, it's mean or, oh my God, her mouth, her mouth, her mouth, her mouth, her mouth. Candace has not came for anybody that has not came for her first. She may throw her little shade in the, in the confessionals and all that, but they all do that. They all talk crap about each other and throw shade. Candace, do not talk about nobody, try nobody before they come for her. Just about every situation that I can think of, or every situation, Candace has always been provoked first, always. Then she defends herself, and then it's a problem, you know. 
Chris took the Ashley's bait and then it went to shit from there. It went into whole calling Michael Darby a slave driver and, and you know, all that kind of stuff and it just went into that. Um you know, they started arguing about the whole thing that happened last year with Monique. And word on the street is that Monique is in cahoots with Mia. And and they working together trying to get Candace on the show. Word on the street, allegedly. That's what I heard. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if, if Monique and Mia have a thing. I wouldn't be shocked. Why would I be shocked by that? Um. So anyway... And if it's, that's the case, it's pretty damn pathetic. Like, y'all are working overtime trying to ruin somebody. Like, let it go. Let it go. Y'all y'all need something to do. More to do, if that is the case. Got, I mean, come on. So, um, they started to get into that. And Candace just is like, you know, you was a snake and everything. And, you know, you're trash and and you were in cahoots with somebody who was trying to ruin me you're messy as hell then here comes giselle taking off for ashley when it looks like when it seems to me that giselle has always when it comes to candace and ashley giselle has always been closer to candace than ashley but she always jumps in and takes off for ashley every single time and and of course robin follows lee like a good follower does um, so, you know, she was just like, no, you can't blame that on Ashley. I was there. You can't blame Ashley for that situation. Ashley had nothing to do with it. Excuse me? Did Ashley not write a statement to the courts saying that Candace was this and that? And, and, and that, um, you know, uh, Monique should not go to jail and all. we've already, I've already stated my opinion on that. No, Monique shouldn't have went to jail and don't deserve to go to jail or none of that. I mean, I agree with that part. But all the other shit that Ashley did and even before that, Ashley had already made her opinion of, of Candace. So, I mean, Ashley didn't have nothing to do with it. Ashley was in the bathroom when the whole altercation happened between Candace and Monique. Yet she still automatically had Monique's side. She didn't see it. She don't never see shit half the time. She ain't never around. But she are. But if it's against witness with Candace and somebody else, she's always on the uh, the other people's side because it's Candace. <clears throat> you know, I wouldn't just continue to argue with the same person. I would ignore Ashley as as much as possible. I wouldn't. I wouldn't sit nowhere near her. I would just act like she's not there at all because I'm not gonna continue to argue with the same person. If I got to see you and deal with you. I'm just going to act like I, you don't exist because I, I'm not going to continue to go back and forth with you all day long. I'm tired. Aren't you tired? Just agree that we can't stand each other and call it a damn day. I'm not going to invite you to my shit. Don't invite me to yours. I, it's a wrap. It's a wrap, niece. I, I don't know how they continue it. I really don't. Um, You know, at one point, Chris, you know, after he tried to get Candace to calm down, he went outside, you know, to cool off. He got mad. Then Drew, which is a scholar's husband, um, came and, you know, he tried to um, check on Chris and see how he was doing. He seems like a nice man. Um, a scholar's really cool. She's just a really cool, level-headed person. You know, I like her. Um... So, you know, uh, it's it just, it got calmed down after a while. And um, it was just, it just ended up being, you know, pretty bad. It ended up being pretty bad. It's unfortunate. Um, especially while the husbands are there for all this to go down like this. Um, once again, if this was a couple's getaway, three of y'all did not have couples. So why did y'all come? Giselle, Robin, Ashley, why did y'all come? And y'all don't even like the person that is hosting the trip. Wendy, so why did y'all come? Anyway, uh, with that said, I'm Mr. Chalaki. Mr. Chalaki on Google Plus. Follow me at Excuse me on Instagram and Twitter 
at Eskins eighty nine on Snapchat, Chase King on Facebook, Mr. Chalaki on Cash App and PayPal, and as always, run me my money or run me my fade, run me my money the way I get paid. Stay black, stay tuned, and I'll see you guys later.